Hi. Welcome back to the Jessica Ruth Knits podcast. I am your host, Jessica, and this is a knitting podcast. Today is February 6th, 2018, and this is episode 32. Um, welcome back. If you are new, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my podcast. And for all of the returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully today the dogs will be quiet. It is absolutely freezing outside, so I've got the wood stove cranked up. Um, they're saying maybe snow tonight, so we'll see. But it's cold, and yeah, so um, the dogs are inside on their bed right next to the wood stove. And I have been sitting on the couch in my bathroom <laughs> pretty much all day, except for going outside to deal with the well. Um, but anyways, this is a knitting podcast, so let's talk some knitting. I have two finished objects to show you that I finished this week, and then I have one to show you that I finished a while ago, and I just never showed it. I did show it on my Instagram, so maybe we'll start with that one. I, oh, whiskey, stop. Um, oh, I just dropped my sweater. Um, sorry, I'm also six and a half months pregnant, so I get, like, out of breath. So, if I pause to take a break, sorry, that was a puppy. If I seem out of breath, I did not just run a marathon, I'm just pregnant. Um, a couple episodes back, I talked about how I had found a huge pile of works in progress that I wanted to try to work through and one of them was this little stuffed animal it's a little elephant and I had him like all done except for one ear so I finished the ear um, so he is completely done so this is Elijah the elephant the pattern is by Isolde Teague the yarn is um, Hugh Loco I don't remember the colorways. And he perfectly matches my Roxy the Hippo. So these are for baby. Um, and they're complimentary, like where I used purple on Roxy, I used gray on Elijah. So they've got their safety eyes, and I think they are just so cute. Um, I knit Ivy when I was going through IVF, and so she was kind of like our IVF mascot. Um, she went to all of my IVF appointments with me, and so I just thought she needed a friend, so now she's got Elijah. So, super cute. Can't wait to have baby play with them. Um, and that's one more work in progress that I finished out of my work in progress pile. So, um, I was super excited about that. I'm gonna sit back here. Oh, we're not. They'll fall into the couch abyss. Alright. Elijah and Roxy. They can be our peanut gallery. So, since last episode, I finished my sweater. And I had talked about, there's no ends woven in or anything, because I'm lazy. Um, I had talked last episode about how I wanted to kind of slow down on my knitting and be more intentional. Um, so I didn't race through this one on purpose. It was just, I had a ton of knitting time, and so I happened to finish it. So, I put progress markers. This is where I was last time. Uh, and this is the Shift of Focus cardigan by Vera Valimaki. So, it's like that. That's the front. And this is the back. The back's just plain garter stitch. So, it's pretty boring. But the little um, coffee progress marker is where I was last week. I put one on the front and one on the back. Since the front was short rows, it was, I didn't feel like I was making as much progress. Um, and it crisscrosses, like, it crisscrosses over here. So it'll be perfect for pregnancy and then for breastfeeding afterwards. And to add a little, like, oomph to the sweater, I bound off in this neon green yarn. Um, I did it there, and then I did it all along the body as well just to give it a finished edge um, so yeah the sleeves the pattern has long sleeves or three-quarter length sleeves 
but I always get so hot um, anyway and I figured if I'm baby wearing or breastfeeding um, it's gonna be a summer baby so I'm gonna be hot anyways so I didn't need a long sleeve sweater um, so I just went ahead and made it short sleeve <laughs> This is <clears throat> I'll take off my shell and show you guys how it fits. I won't stand up, but um, you can keep an eye out on my Instagram. Sorry, can you guys hear that the puppy was a squeaky toy? Um, once I get the ends woven in, I will post it on Instagram. So the neck is pretty wide. Um, I might take some of the neon green and crochet. Like a, just a single crochet around it to kind of bring it in. I'm worried that the more I wear it, the neck's just going to get bigger and bigger. Um, and if I just tighten it up a little bit, I think it'd be perfect. So it's like that, and then it crisscrosses here. But I'm not going to stand up. Um, <sighs> yeah. So that was my big, exciting, finished. Ob Ugh, all that ends finished object of the week. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to knit pieces that I can wear during pregnancy and beyond. Um, I'm planning on breastfeeding and I mean so if you breastfeed for a year, year and a half, that's like two whole years of not really wanting to wear cardigans. Um, I mean, not wanting to wear pullovers, so it's either, like, I can only knit cardigans or, um, sweaters like this where it's, like, a faux cardigan, I guess? I don't know. But I'm trying to be mindful of, like, what my body will be like, um, and, yeah, and knit for that. Knit something that I can actually wear, uh, as opposed to just knitting a pattern that I like and then not being able to wear it because I'm pregnant or because I'm breastfeeding. So, yeah. Okay. Um, my only other finished object is a sock. So, last week I was here, or last episode I was here. These are done toe up. So, for, I did all the way from here. I just did a fish lips kiss heel. And then I knit a few rows and did two by two ribbing. Um, so it's just a basic vanilla shorty sock. Like that. And this is for me. Um, if you didn't watch last episode, I have two skeins. This is long dog, long dog yarn. Um, in their pumpkin something colorway. I don't have the ball band on me. Um. But it's something to do with pumpkin or pumpkin spice. Um, so I have two skeins of these. So what I want to do is knit from the two skeins, knit socks for my husband, for me, and baby socks. So my husband wears a size 13 US shoe. Um, which meant that there will probably only be enough yarn for my socks to be shorties. So I'm knitting my socks first, and then I'll knit baby socks and then with the remaining yarn, I can knit hubby socks as long as, until I run out of yarn. Oh, excuse me, so that's my plan. Um, it's super soft. I have never knit with this yarn before. And I love it. I mean, the color is super pretty. It's super gender neutral. So my husband said he would wear socks in this color. Um, and I obviously will wear them. And then we're not finding out the gender of baby, so... I figure orange socks could be boy or girl for baby. So, um, yeah, I will take this progress keeper off. I have to cast on for the second one. I haven't even cast on yet. Um, I knit these on, all my needles are Chegu's, unless I have like a random different needle. But Chegu's size zero, and I magic looped them. Um, magic loop to me is easiest for portability. Um, I can just throw it in my bag or in my purse, and I don't have to worry about if the stitches are going to fall off like double points. Um, I do love knitting with double points, but maybe more for like a, a leave-at-home project. Um, so we'll see. But, 
yeah, these are on Chigo size zero. I knit so loose, guys. And even these, like, let me see if I can stick my hand in. I mean, like, it's, I guess it's tight. It looks tight there, but, um, I mean, I can see, like, oh, <laughs> you guys can't see it. But I can see, you know, like, the light holes through it. Um, but if I knit on a size 2 or a 1, it's just ridiculously loose. So I have to go down to zeros um, to get the sort of fabric I like for a dense thing like socks. Now for shawls, you know, by all means I can knit it looser because it doesn't matter. Um, but for socks, I want that dense fabric. And so I do them on zeros. So that's that. Uh, this is how much I have left in this this one skein. So this will get me one baby sock, and then we'll see how big hubby's sock gets to be out of this. Uh, and this is housed, I showed this last time, in my By the Lakeside bag, which I absolutely love. And it's got bees on the inside. And um, I think they're bees. Maybe they're supposed to be moths. It's got a bee bot. I always said they were bees. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's a moth. It's just got a bee body. Whatever. Who knows? Who cares? I like it regardless. Um, we have honeybees. We have three hives here. So I like anything that has to do with bees. Um, so I'm going to say they're bees, but if they're moths, I really don't care. I still like it. All right. Then, oh yeah, I have one work in progress. And I just realized it kind of matches my sweater I just finished. So this is the Quicksilver Shawl by, <coughs> I want to say Melanie Berg. Let me put that up. Sorry, that was the puppy. Um, yeah, by Melanie Berg. And so it's like this. I think it'll be super pretty. Um... I'm doing it in, let me show you, I've got yarn hanging everywhere, which oh, this way is the right side. So I just cast on last night, and it's like this. So there's two different colors of purple as the mace stripes, and then this like yellowy color for the lace. Um, so this is my lace. And what, um, let me look and see what the yarns are, because I stuck the ball bands inside the balls. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry. Uh, okay, here we go. Oh, so this one is with pointed sticks is the yarn brand and the colorway is gold hearted boy Houston stop so with pointed sticks I've never used them before um it's almost like an <laughs> acid reflux color um which I love but it's just it's very bright hey don't chew on the tripod don't chew on the tripod no um uh, my other two colors oh I'm sorry the puppy. Um, this one is Primrose Yarn. Are you guys crooked now? Hold on. Oh, that's any better. Primrose Yarn Company. The tag said Sins and Needles was the company. I don't know if that's what they used to be, and then they changed their name to Primrose. Um, but when I typed in Sins and Needles 89, I think was the brand in Ravelry, it automatically changed it to Primrose Yarn Company. So I'm guessing that's what happened. But this one is um, Punk Rock Princess. So there's that one. This is my lighter purple. And then my darker purple is Ellie and Ada. And the colorway is Violet Oil Beetle. I have no idea what that is referring to, if anything. Um, but it's like a super dark. Variegated. Super pretty, I think. Um, so those are my yarns. Like that. 
and it kind of go really well with my sweater, um, which is kind of funny. But I put that over there. I'm doing these on Shaigu size five. Now I have the interchangeable set, but my five tips were in use somewhere. So I'm using these ones. I hate this right here. Um, I think the Chegu, the red lace is the ones that are straight, but all of the ones in my interchangeable set are just a straight needle and then it doesn't have this stupid bend here. I don't know if it's supposed to be more ergonomic or what, but it really bugs the crap out of me. Um, but I have no idea where my size 5 tips are. They're probably on some work in progress up in my storage loft and I wasn't going to go dig them out just because I don't like that bend right there. It'll be fine. Um, so I'm on the third wedge. The wedges are the same and then these chunks of lace get bigger and bigger each time. So I think it's going to be super fun. It's super addicting, super easy to keep on track and it's just mindless TV knitting, um, which is pretty fun right now. So I cast that on last night. And that is all of my projects that I'm, well, I guess this is the only one I'm working on. Um, I do want to cast on for the baby sock, maybe later today. Um, oh, and this, this shawl lives in my fringe field supply bag. And I've got a Santa Cruz otter, because I'm from Santa Cruz. Starbucks, because I worked at Starbucks. Little green army man, because my husband was in the army for 13 years. Um, I was given this Legacy Arts pin. I bought this girl, well this girl and her knitting ball over here on Etsy. And then another Starbucks military pride pin um and this one says mom fuel but first mom fuel and that was sent to me in one of my um advent calendar swaps so those are just some of the pins that i have on here this one as much as i love it the chain keeps getting tangled on the little legacy sheep but yeah um my yellow fringe bag i love yellow um so that's that. Back there again. Okay, I have a couple acquisitions. Nothing that I purchased, but things that were given to me. So my girlfriend went to Pearl Soho in New York and brought me back one of their brand, like their brand of yarn. It's the Pearl Soho Season Alpaca. It's 100% baby alpaca. Like that. And it is this brown, it's almost like got a purple heathered look to it. Um, and it is so, like, it's so soft. So what I want to do with this is make a little um, baby hat. And you know how they have the ones with, like, the little bear ears? I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, either bear ears or, like, kitty ears. But I think the bear. Um, so, yeah. It, this one is 218 yards. I'm guessing it's a worsted or a DK. Um, it says use size three to five needles. So yeah, maybe a DK. It doesn't say on here. The colorway is peach stone. But yeah, so I think that's super pretty. It'll make such a soft baby hat. Um, and I'll have plenty left over maybe to make booties. I don't know, or socks. We'll see. But yeah, so thank you, Missy. I love it. Um, and I can't wait to knit with it. So I'm going to put that back in its bag. Then a podcast viewer sent me such a sweet package. I got it yesterday. And um, she made this giraffe for baby, which is so... Look at the floppy... I don't know, are these antenna? Like, I just love it. It is so cute. 
and it's got spots on its back and a little tip. Oh, excuse me. So it is just super cute and crocheted. Um, the little ears are brown on the back side. It is just, I don't know, it's so stinking cute. So, um, yeah, I love it. Um, so she made that one for baby. And then she made this super sweet cardigan. But look at how it's wrapped. It says hand knit with love. And it's like, um, like a label that you put around it. And so on the back it has care instructions. So if you were giving it to a non-knitter, you know, you could write care instructions on here. As a knitter, I will hand wash all of baby's knits anyways. So um, it doesn't really matter if it's super wash or not because I'll be hand washing them. Theoretically. But she made the newborn vertebrae. And it, oh, it's so soft. Um, and the yarn is so perfect. Um, it's just, it's such a great gender neutral colorway. There's a lot of purple in it. Some, like turquoisey green. Yeah, it is so cute. So, I will add this. Baby has a special box for all of Baby's hand knits. Um, and so this is going to go into Baby's hand knit box with the other things that I have made and the other things that have been gifted to Baby so far. So I absolutely appreciate it and love it and can't wait to put it on Baby. So thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to stick the ball band back on it because I just think that's so cute. So yeah, hand knit with love. It's so fun. Alright, so those are all my acquisitions. Um, I went on, okay, so that's all of my knitting, and I, we're only at 21 minutes, guys. This might actually be a shorter one. Um, I'll do a little bit of life update now, if, so if you want to stick around for that, you can. If not, thank you for watching the knitting content, and, um, yeah, thanks for visiting. Alright, so life updates on Friday, today is Tuesday. On Friday, I went and spent time with my girlfriend, Lori, who is the dyer behind Arkansas Yarn Company. Um, you can find her on Etsy. She's also on Instagram as Arkansas Yarn Co. Um, and she is my hairdresser. And so I got my haircut, which you can't tell right now because it's up in a ponytail. And, um, but it's cute and it's, it's just something fresh because I'm going out to California next week for a baby shower. So I wanted just a new haircut for that. So Lori did such a good job. Um, usually I just tell her like, take this many inches off it and then have at it. And she just, she works her magic and I always love it. Um, Lori and I, maybe I'll tell the story of how we met if we ever do a podcast together. But, um, sorry, the dog's trying to get the chickens on the other side of the bus door. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. So, Lori cut my hair, and then we went to Tacos for Life together, and just had a fun day knitting together, um, and, yeah. So, uh, um, did that on Friday, that was super fun, and then today, the well driller is here, and oh my goodness. So, uh, we, up until now, we haven't had running water, we still don't, because the well's not done, but... Um, we have been using rainwater catchment for the animals outside, and we bring in filtered water for inside, like for dishes and drinking and cooking. Um, but it will be so nice to have running water once the well is done. So, they, this is Arkansas, guys, and it is so different from California. Um, I'm from California, I live in Arkansas, and it is just a totally different world. Um, so I contacted the well guy a few months ago and you know said we want to get on your list and so he's like okay and so we asked him you know like how long I think he said like eight to ten weeks. Um, it's okay fine and then so I called you know like after the eight weeks or whatever I called him and oh yeah you know a couple more weeks da -da, like I'll call you da 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 da. So then Two weeks ago, I called him, you know, just checking, like, where we are on the list. You know, make sure he didn't forget about us. And, oh, yeah, you know, you're still on my list. And da-da-da-da-da. 
So, finally, yesterday morning, he calls and he says, you know, can, I'm out your way. Can I come by and see where you want the well? So I said, sure. You know, I was home all day. So he comes over and he has such a southern drawl. And I think he chews, like, tobacco. So it's super hard to understand what he's saying. Um, but he was super sweet, you know, and super nice. And uh, you know how, like, in olden, olden days... They witched for water and they would have a like a branch and then it would branch off into like a wishbone almost and then they would hold it out and when it started shaking or when it did something it meant there was water there i thought that was just like in the old like pioneer days um i thought he'd have like i don't know like a geiger counter or something you know to come out and say like oh here's where you should put it the puppy's outside and he's got a big chicken feather in his mouth. He doesn't actually eat the chickens or chase them. He just thinks he's big and tough and he likes to play with the feathers. Um, anyways, so the guy comes out yesterday and he's got these two little, like, metal sticks, I guess. Um, and he holds them out straight like this and he's walking around and then all of a sudden they, so if they're straight like this, all of a sudden they go boing, straight in, like, and point to each other. And then he backs away and they go back out. And then he comes at it from the same spot from a different angle. And so, you know, he's walking, walking, walking. And all of a sudden, boing! And so he's like, well, you know, right here is where we're going to put it. And it was so, like, so cool to watch. Um, and I didn't think they did that anymore. But apparently they do. So then he gets in his car. You know, like we talk for a little bit. And he gets in his car and he's like, well, I'll see you when I see ya. And he drives away and I'm like, what the hell does that mean? Huh? You know, is he the one going to come out and drill my well? Or is it going to be somebody else? Like part of his crew? Does that mean you're not coming for a while and you'll call me when you're ready? Like, I had no idea. And so then I go back inside and I'm like, well, I guess I'll see him when I see him, right? So then last night, it's like 6 o'clock at night maybe, like it's getting dark. Maybe it was 5 because it was getting dark. And... I hear this big truck noise so I go outside to see what's going on and they've got the well drilling truck is here and so it and I was like there's no way they're gonna dig tonight because um, it was almost dark so they're just dropping off the truck and getting it set up and I was like you know and it wasn't the guy that had come by earlier he was the boss so this is just the crew and now the puppy wants to come back in um so they dropped off the truck last night and then he's like Weather permitting, we'll be back tomorrow, so today. Um, and like I said, it was supposed to storm today. So he was like, you know, if it's storming, we'll be there the next day. Hold on just a second. Okay. Um, puppy's back in now. So he's like, you know, weather permitting, we'll be back tomorrow. So I said, okay, good. So then this morning, it's like 7.30 and I'm in bed. And I hear noises outside. And I'm like, they can't be here this early. No, the guy was here. So, he had been here since 7.30 this morning, working, um, and we're 240 feet down, we're only at 3 gallons per minute, so we did hit water, which is good, but we're only at 3 gallons a minute, which may or may not be enough to do a house, he said, he said they like to get 5 gallons a minute, um, but because we're not in a big house and we don't, like, have a pool and all of that, 3 gallons might be fine. He said, once they're done, you know, we can hook up to the well, see if it's enough. If it's not, we'll have to get, like, a holding tank. Um, and so we'll, we can fill the holding tank up, and then we'll have more pressure that way. So we'll see. I'm just glad we hit water. Um, he said there's no guarantee you'll even hit water. Um, you know, he was saying a couple jobs ago, they drilled down a couple hundred feet, and it was just bone dry. And so you got to pay for them to do all the work to dig, and it's not cheap, and then you might not even get water out of the deal. So, I was just crossing my fingers and praying that we would get water. So, I'll take three gallons a minute. Um, hopefully it's enough to run the tiny house. If not, we'll go to plan B. But at least we will have water. So, that was exciting for today. Um, and, yeah. Baby, we are 24 and a half weeks now. Um, which means we hit viability and viability is when they, if I deliver like now, like tomorrow or today, 
The doctors and nurses will do everything they can to try to save baby and help baby. Before 24 weeks, it, your chances of baby surviving is super slim. Um, babies do, but it's super slim. So they might not try as hard as they will now because now they know babies can make it after 24 weeks. So that is like such a stress relief. Um, obviously, I don't, as much as I want baby here, I don't want baby here early or this early. Um, so I mean, obviously like we're hoping baby stays, you know, cooking. But um, if something happens and baby needs to come early, at least baby will have a fighting chance of surviving. So that has been a huge mile marker in our pregnancy. Um, and Tim got to feel baby kick the other day for the first time. So um, up until then I had been like, obviously I feel baby kick. And I would call Tim over and be like, baby's kicking, baby's kicking. And he would come over and put his hand on my belly and baby would stop kicking. <laughs> Um, and so but he got to feel baby kick the other, you know, the other night. So that was super exciting. Um, as soon as I sit down on the couch and if I start watching something on my iPad, baby starts kicking and baby really likes YouTube. Um, I don't know why, but as soon as I pause it, you know, to try to like film baby kicking or to, you know, try to tell Tim that baby's kicking, baby stops kicking. So I had to, in order for Tim to feel baby kick. I had to take the iPad in bed with me and play YouTube <laughs> and the baby started kicking. So I don't know if it's just the like background noise that baby likes or what, but um, whatever, all the more excuse to sit and watch some YouTube. So we have been doing all sorts of research on cloth diapering, um, like just watching cloth diapering videos, watching baby haul videos, watching newborn videos, um, watching knitting podcasts. Uh, there has been lots of YouTube going on at um, our tiny house. Um, yeah, we're putting an addition on the tiny house. Uh, of you who don't follow along, um, we live in a tiny house and we're putting an addition. So the addition is almost all drywalled. We took the day off today because we have to let the drywall um, dry, like the mudding and sanding. Um, sorry, I keep looking out the window because there's chickens and they're so distracting. Um, so we have to let the drywall mud dry and it doesn't dry very fast when it's this cold outside. And so we got the day off today, even though I've been dealing with the well guy all day. Um, but yeah, as soon we've got the third coat of mud on, which is the final coat. So now we just need to texturize the drywall and then we're ready, oh. for, we're ready for the flooring. Oh. Hey, hey, stop. You're okay. Um, sorry, the puppy just tries to chew on the older dog's leg. Um, so, yeah, so it's coming along, it's, like, it's so exciting to see it all come together now. Um, I've never done any construction, like, from the ground up, and so, you know, as soon as the studs went up, I was like, I'm ready to decorate, and then it was, we had to, you know, put in the electricity and put in the drywall. And so every step I'm like, okay, like now we're done. And then we're not. So um, I'm just itching to get in there and decorate. And so the addition will be three rooms. There's a bedroom, um, like a mudroom entryway. So it'll have an, it'll be our new like front door entryway. And then a bathroom. Um, so I'm super excited about the bedroom. And just being able to like have a space and we can close the bedroom door, um, which will be nice with baby and the dogs. Um, yeah, so it's super exciting. Um, we leave for California next week, so, um, obviously that will halt progress on the edition, but, um, Tim will come back before me. He's only going to be out for a couple days, um, in California, and then I'm going to stay out for a couple weeks, and then I will drive back. Um, so he'll be able to work on it some when he gets back. But it's coming along, and yeah, I think that's all of the news I have for you guys this week. Um, it's, I feel like it's boring here, because it's the same old, same old, like, every day I get up and we work on the edition, and, um, yeah, I mean, that's like, the days when Tim works, that's what I do, and then I knit the rest of the day, so, um. 
today's a little different because we have the well guy here but other than that it's the same old same old so I will let you guys go um and yeah I hope you have a great week <coughs> excuse me I might try to get an episode out next week before we go to California because after that I don't know it'll be a couple weeks before I can podcast again um so if I have anything to show you next week then I'll do an episode real quick. But, um, yeah. I hope you guys have a great week. Thanks so much for watching. And, um, you can, real quick, find me on Instagram. I'm Jessica Ruth Knits, all one word. And on Ravelry, I'm Sergeant Griff's Girl. So it's S-G-T-G-R-I-F-F-S Girl. G-I-R-L. Um, yeah. Alright, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great week. I'll talk to you later, y'all. Bye.